Describing a plant's habit is one of the first observations you can make that are helpful for plant identification. To start, ask yourself, is this plant a tree, like this big leaf maple with its central woody trunk? Is it a shrub, like this western redbud that has many woody branches from the base? Or is it an herb, like this lily, which refers to plants that are not woody? But what about this plant? Do you see the plant climbing all over the toyon? It is neither a tree nor a shrub. It is a woody vine. This is Clematis lazyantha, a woody vine that grows among plants in hilly chaparral and woodland habitats throughout California. It is easy to spot Clematis lazyantha when it is in bloom throughout the spring. Let's take a closer look at the flowers. A quick reminder that flowers generally have four whorls, sepals, petals, stamens, and pistils. However, there are exceptions when a flower may not have all four whorls, and Clematis lazyantha is a great example. Individual flowers of Clematis lazyantha have four bright sepals that are white or cream in color. That's right, sepals can be colorful too. There are no petals in this flower, just one whorl of colorful sepals. Look close at this flower still in bud and you will find tiny hairs on the young sepals. Flowers of clematis are unisexual and come in two types. These flowers are staminate or male flowers. They have many free stamens that release pollen and no pistils. And here, on another plant of the same species, are pistillate or female flowers. They have no stamens, but do have many pistils that will develop into fruits. Each carpel produces a fruit called an achene. Pictured here are many achenes produced from a single flower. Check out the many long feathery styles here. Each one is the visible portion of a single fruit. The fruit body of Clematis lazyantha is covered in hairs, which is key to distinguishing this species and another, Clematis passiflora, if you are in Southern California, where Clematis passiflora occurs. The two species look very similar, but the fruit body of Clematis passiflora is glabrous. Here is a single leaf of Clematis lazyantha. It is a compound leaf containing five leaflets. This species has three to five leaflets on a central axis, making the leaf pinnately compound. The overall shape of each individual leaflet is variable. It can appear ovate, lanceolate, or somewhere in between. The margin of the leaflet is also variable, appearing entire, lobed two to three times, or toothed, as is the case with this one here. Always make sure to count the number of leaflets within a single leaf. Having three to five leaflets is key to identifying Clematis lazyantha. There is one more species in this genus that occurs in California that you should look out for. Clematis ligustisifolia looks similar to the others, but is found in wetter places, like along streams, and flowers throughout the summer, later in the year than Clematis lazyantha and Clematis passiflora. Like Clematis lazyantha, Clematis ligustisifolia occurs widely in California. Clematis is a distinctive genus among the Ranunculaceae, or buttercup family. In California, all members of this family have no fusion of parts within a flower, so we say the flower parts are free. Despite this, surprisingly complex floral forms have evolved in the Ranunculaceae. Other notable genera in this family include Aquilegia, known as Columbine, with radial symmetry and each sepal is petal-like with a spur, Delphinium or Larkspur with bilateral symmetry and only the uppermost sepal having a spur, Ranunculus or Buttercup with radially symmetric shiny yellow petals, many yellow stamens, and many free pistils, and Thalictrum or Meadow Ruse, most notable for their showy pendant stamens. There are so many amazing plants out there. Use the Jepson videos to help you learn these plants and more as you explore California.